Hello, my friends. It's the end of the year, and I've got a spare 30 minutes or so, so I'm going to record this video off the cuff for you. Inspired by my friend Anna's Twitter post here. What was your favorite low IQ Twitter discourse this year? This is the low IQ Twitter awards, guys. And there are a lot of good ones in here, like, for example, Abolish Kitchens. I remember that stuff. I think he even replied. Commies wanting the communal kitchens of the Soviet Union back because owning your own kitchen is a waste of resources and space and a sign of bourgeois decadence. Yeah, that was a thing. I recall someone saying, no one needs a kitchen. In fact, no one needs an X seems to be a common logic with the communists online. They did the same thing when the stadia shut down and I was talking about that back in that video. There was that one idiot who was like, no one needs a console. It's more sustainable if we all just run things from Google servers. It's like, shut the fuck up. This person, of course, says the same as every year, can't get pride. That is an especially cancerous discourse, that's for sure. EBT fast food? I don't remember that one. I'm <laughs> considering the name of it. Maybe I'm happy that it didn't happen. NFTs or trans phrenology in sports? Oh god. Oh yeah, the whole restaurants are exploitative thing. Like the idea of restaurants. And after the revolution, everyone will cook their own food. You can do that now. And actually, I've seen the inverse too. I've seen the inverse where people were saying like, after the revolution, you will simply order food from a centralized source. Oh yeah, the anarchist supply chains. This was like when Doe and Demon Mama were fighting over, because they're both like ANCOMs, you know, anarcho-communists, they wanted to like destroy supply chains and prevent goods from being moved around. And it's like, how, uh, how, do, how, how do you expect to redistribute if you have no supply chains, you fucking morons? They're, they're, okay, don't look those people up, by the way. They're literally the dumbest people on the internet. It's not fucking worth it. Here's one that I remember. This is from Grumpy Shrubbery. And my god, this makes my brain leak out of my ears. Unfriendly reminder, if you claim to advocate on behalf of the mentally ill and or neurodivergent, but exclude people with personality disorders, particularly narcissistic personality disorder from your activism, you're an activist, you're an ableist. You don't get to pick and choose with which disabilities are worth your time. You don't have to understand someone's brain to know that ableism is bad. That's the whole fucking point. So let me get this straight. If you don't let that narcissist uh, steal everything from you and then rape your fucking beheaded corpse, you're, uh, you're being an ableist. Well, sign me up for bigot school, baby. This person, by the way, Grumpy Shrubbery, this person's insane. They regularly have the most terminally online brain rotted takes I've ever seen. For example, this is their most viral tweet of the year. It really doesn't sit right with me when people make fun of people who can't cook. It's not their fault that no one taught them and learning any skill as an adult can be really daunting, especially when cookery is such an overwhelmingly broad concept. Haha, <laughs> they can't even boil an egg? That's not funny. It's shit they never had an opportunity to learn. Instead of just providing that opportunity, you're just gonna laugh at them? OMG, get a life. Having opportunities to learn to cook as a kid is a massive privilege. Yes, this is the infamous boiling an egg is classist discourse. The recipe starts by telling you to boil an egg. You Google how to boil an egg. It tells you to boil a pot of water. How much water? Which pot? What temperature? You give up and order a pizza. <laughs> Hey, I feel personally called out here. Everyone's missing the point. What you see as obvious is not obvious if no one ever taught them. This is an example. I know how to boil water, but also set the stove dial to the highest temperature. Isn't some intuitive thing a person knows? It's not an instinct. These these people, they seem like they seem like they're like actually retarded, like they're actually remedial. They have to go to the special classroom in school because they can't do the most basic fucking things. Okay, here's the thing about boiling an egg, all right? Assume that you had to boil an egg and assume that all you could do is trial and error. You have your dozen eggs, you have your water, you have your pot. Maybe you uh, put the egg, the egg into the pot, and then you don't add the water, and then it burns the egg, and then, you know, your smoke alarm goes off. Okay, there's attempt one. Don't do that. Maybe you put water in, maybe you boil it too much, and the egg gets way too hot and explodes. That, ha that happens sometimes, especially when you take it out of the water. Okay, you boil it too much. You you're learning, you're learning, you know? The third one, you cook it up. Maybe you, uh, you cook it too little, and then it's kind of raw on the inside. All right, you know how people learn? It's trial and error. You don't need to be taught by someone. You should have the mental faculty to just give something a go and see what sticks, which is what makes a lot of these conversations so like absolutely fucking ridiculous. You know, just the idea that you should have to have the minimum amount of standards. 
and just, hey, maybe, you, you know, you're an adult now. You're not this, you know, 15-year-old quirky neurodivergent activist teen. You're in your 20s now. You got to be taking care of yourself. You got to do your own laundry. You got to make your own food. Welcome to being a person. How about you try a few things and figure it the fuck out, all right? At some point, it stops being classist, it stops being ableist, and it just becomes regular fucking human living that apparently you can't do. This kind of feels like that they, them household meme video that I did like six months ago. I would not want to fucking room with any of these people. These are the same individuals who blame capitalism or the bourgeois or their landlords or their parents that they can't hold down jobs or afford mortgages. If you can't boil an egg, you can't own a fucking house. And Anna's not the only person doing this sort of thing. You've got, what was the most chronically online discourse you saw this year? Mine's gotta be chopping tomatoes is elitist. Oh my god, do I really want to dive down more than one of these threads? Sometimes, every once in a blue moon, I think you guys ask too much of me. I unironically hate this, like, infantilization of adults. But, like, it's not even infantilization by some kind of overarching authority. They infantilize themselves. They, they, they make themselves look as, like, as weak and impotent as they possibly can. Like, like, look at this. Look at this guy. Hello, Seattle. I haven't left my apartment in over two years due to crippling anxiety and my work-from-home job. Today, I finally went out and got an adult Happy Meal. Dude. God, I don't know how, how mean I want to be because there's like the, on the one hand, okay, crippling anxiety. Good job for actually like taking a step outside and you're doing it. But how in the fuck did you let it get this bad? And the worst part is that when older people like Gen X or whatever, they notice that this is like the hip new thing with the kids. And so they purposely do the infantilizing thing as a way to relate. And it's like, oh, here, w watch this and cringe with me. It's Monday night and here's what's happened. Me. What are, you, what are you doing under my desk? Well, under the desk is kind of my thing. I mean... Yeah, but here's the thing. You can stay for now, but when it comes time to voting, you're going to have to get up because you've got climate change legislation on the ballot. You've got gun safety. And if we can elect more pro-choice members of Congress, we can reinstitute Roe versus Wade as the law of the land. So you can't stay here. You're going to have to take a little bit of time to vote. Is now a bad time to say that I voted for McCain in 2008? Eh, as long as you voted. <laughs> this is how the Democrats will keep winning elections, guys. You'll have TikTokers hiding under tables from the world, and Obama coming and sitting down and being like, it's all right, buddy. This seems like mentally handicapped advertising for a mentally handicapped generation. This entire infantilizing sentiment culminated with this video that went viral while I was off busy being a corpse. I'm sure you've seen literally everyone else's take on this, so I won't spend too long on it, but let's at least take a quick view. People wonder why we need a union at Starbucks, and oh my, oh my God, I have to stop right there. <laughs> How many? We're five seconds into the video, and I'm already stopping. Unions have their place, right? But man, every single one of my experiences with a union has been negative, and no, you don't need a union at a fast food place, like. This is not supposed to be a career. This is a revolving door job. You use it as, as a stepping stone, make some quick cash, get the fuck out. If you're sitting here thinking this is where you're going to be in 10, 20 years, dude, you got to be shooting higher than this. I am literally about to quit. Like, I, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but like, I really want to. I almost walked out today and I'm... Do it, pussy. Do it. I'm crying in the back room right now and I almost cut on the floor. It's just... <laughs> I, like, I get... I'm like a full-time student. I get... Oh my god, dude. You're, you're a full-time student, and you're doing this part-time job, and you gotta go into the break room and, like, cuddle up and cry. Really? Scheduled for 25 hours a week, and on a weekend, they schedule me the entire day, open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours. Welcome to a job, dude. Like, what the... <laughs> I'm scheduled part-time, 25 hours a week. Yeah, it's part-time, dude. On the weekends, they got me opening close. They got me doing an eight-hour shift. Yeah, that's being an adult. Welcome to regular work. Regular work's 40 hours a week. Nine to five, baby. Both Saturday and Sunday. I'm like three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers and we have four people on the floor all day. Oh, oh, you poor, you poor child. It's, there's work to do at work and I can't handle it. Only five people were put on the schedule and somebody had to call out and there are four people running the whole store and there's so many customers and there's possibly scheduled five people. <laughs> yeah, welcome welcome to the lunch rush at Starbucks. People are coming in, they want their coffees, they want, I mean, they, I think they make sandwiches or donuts or whatever the fuck at Starbucks. You know, most, most coffee places do that. You know, people want their food. This is what you're paid for. You're paid, I can't believe I have to explain this, you're paid to get the coffee 
and get the sandwich and get the donut and then give it to the people who have paid you money for it. All right. Like, this is your job. You're not describing anything that is out of the ordinary. This is something you should be used to by now. That, oh my god, there's people and they want they want their food. Oh, we're tr- this is terrible. Karl Marx, save us. <laughs> we only have 13 people employed at this store. And there's so many customers. And they are good. <laughs> the customers, they're coming like zombies. Bruh. Donuts, coffee, bruh. We don't have fair scheduling. Managers don't care about us. Our manager was supposed to come in this weekend and he took himself off the schedule so he wouldn't be able to be held accountable for calling out. He just literally tore down the schedule that he was scheduled on and put up a new schedule where he wasn't on the schedule. Also, he couldn't have even seen that he was scheduled in the first place because he didn't want to be held accountable for not wanting to come in. Giga chat. <laughs> okay, listen, listen, all right? Here, Here's the deal with part-time. Your managers don't like you. You don't like your managers. You're not friends. You're not comrades in the struggle. And this whole like, oh my God, the manager, the manager didn't come in on the weekend. We had to do it. You know what? Managers, you know, sometimes you get like shit bosses, right? But a lot of the time, managers are actually doing other jobs that are just as important. You're just not seeing them. It's like, oh, my manager's just sitting in the office on the computer. I can't fucking believe. You know what he's doing on that computer? He's ordering stock for the store. Okay, and so he spends a little while ordering stock so that you actually have, you know, donuts that you can bake and coffee that you can pour. A a lot of these complaints about terrible managers, like 99% of them are just complete and total ignorance about what other people in the workplace do. They don't want to help us. We need a union because this can't happen. This can't happen. We need fair scheduling. We need... What what do you what do you fucking mean fair scheduling? You're getting 25 hours a week. You're they're, they're, they they seem to be working around your classes. You know you're saying I'm oh, I'm a full time student. They only schedule me on weekends. Oh, when you don't have classes? Okay, you know what? I was working part time. I've worked many part time jobs. I've been like, listen, I got other shit going on. You can only schedule me on these days for these times. If you can't fit me in, all right. I guess I get less hours than I should. But you no, know, I was firm with it because that's what you do when you're a fucking adult all right you 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 remain firm you say no here's when i can work it's a part-time job you're not my primary concern either they let you go and you gotta find another job which is no big deal part-time jobs are you know easy come easy go or they schedule you on your availability welcome to being an adult we need managers to hold themselves accountable for helping their workers they refuse to turn mobile orders on we need the liberty to be able to do that because there's so many mobile orders and i need to get through all of them and then people are yelling at me because they don't have their orders ready and they don't know what to do, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> oh god yeah there have been so many times where like retarded fucking customers have yelled and i've just been like all right dude whatever like you you got to get used to this all right. Yeah, it sucks. You probably shouldn't treat wages poorly. You probably shouldn't treat wages poorly. But welcome, welcome, welcome to how it is. Listen, sometimes, sometimes an amateur filmmaker from Las Vegas in 1997 needs to go through your drive-through and abuse the wages there for his film. Only SFO Discord watchers will get it. A customer was misgendering me tonight, like really badly. I didn't have their order ready, and so they were just like talking, talking to each other, and they're like, "She's clearly incompetent." I have a full mustache and beard. Wait, you're trans? Oh. I mean, I guess that explains a lot of the the instability. But uh, no, I couldn't tell. So well done on that. You you just seem like a soy boy. <laughs> I don't get accommodations for being neurodivergent. I don't. <laughs> what? What fucking? What fucking accommodations for neurodivergency? Like, whatever the fuck, are you autistic? Like, what is it? Like, is there going to be, like, a special corner of the break room up there where it's, like, it's all, like, padded walls or something? Like, like what the fuck do you want? Do you want, like, like a kitten petting area? Like, maybe you should go work at LinkedIn. They seem to be really cushy over there. I'm, like, at my wits end with this job. I really am. <laughs> Here's what you do, all right? You're, you're a man now, so you got to act like a man, all right? You got to stand up, you got to set boundaries, and then you got to stick to them. And if it turns out that your workplace actually is really shit, well, then it means you got to move on. If it's not, then it means you have to, quite literally, grow a pair. Now, I'm not going to harp on this guy uh, too much after this because because he really did get raked over the fucking coals when this video went viral. Like, a ton of YouTubers were reacting to this guy and making fun of him. It was the perfect storm for rightoids on the internet, you know? Trans Starbucks barista cries about... (laughs) <laughs> really simplistic part-time work. People love this shit when it happened. And it definitely went too far, that's for sure. 
Like, there's no reason for this to be featured on Fox News. Fox News is not a rightoid YouTube channel that does React content, and it seems like the culture war has just rotted everyone's brain out. And this is why the trans Starbucks barista is my personal pick for the lowest IQ Twitter discourse of the year, solely because it was a perfect storm of ridiculousness that went way way too fucking far. You can tell a low IQ Twitter discourse specifically by noticing that if you actually analyze it for more than, you know, five seconds and with more than five brain cells, you recognize that they're all products of immense privilege, generally made by young leftist people who are probably leftists, let's be real, because they're pretty young, who haven't really experienced the world, who haven't really experienced any sort of oppression, who haven't really worked a day in their lives. And the minute that their soft bodies, soft minds, and soft lives experience even the slightest little bit of resistance to anything that they want to do, it's oppression. And so it turns into classism or ableism or whatever the fuck ism. And if they're terminally online, they make it into a low IQ Twitter discourse. It is the best part of Twitter. How stupid some of these fucking people can be. I have tried many times to quit Twitter, I probably never will, simply because the laugh value is too great. I can't wait for next year's low IQ Twitter discourses. It's going to be incredible. And I hope you guys are here for it. I will see you then. I love you.